think, very <coughs> new and burning data. Thank you very much, uh, Alexandre. Thank you very much, Massimo. Again, thanks for the invitation by the scientific committee of uh, the SRLF by Alexandre de Moule and for uh, everybody here. This is my conflict of interest. I propose you in the 15 minutes to present you uh, some uh, background about the use of NIV in post-operative uh, area, uh, both in uh, preventive and curative, and uh, try to give you some main message about what which type of surgery and patient who may benefit from this uh, strategy. And I will present you for the second time uh, uh, and first time in France, the most recent uh, results of the trial, which is called the NIVAS study. And I give you just some uh, key keys for the use in clinical practice and IV. First of all, the post-operative NIV could be applied in this situation as a curative or prophylactic. Curative means that you apply an IV in patients with acute respiratory failure, and the aim of this strategy is to try to avoid in the intubation. However, using an IV in prophylactic area is try to avoid the occurrence of acute respiratory failure in patients without any signs of respiratory distress. And this is a typical point of view. However, in the real life, you have some gray zones that could be a patient be in, sometimes in the curative uh, time and other time in prophylactic that called gray zones. And in both approaches, you can use CPAP, which means one uh, positive pressure level, and NIV, which is a two positive airway pressure, mainly use PEEP with pressure support ventilation. This is an editorial published in the uh, Intensive Care Medicine Journal with Massimo, and we try to highlight what is this approaches and uh, on phases on the gray zones. However, as you know, in post-extubation NIV, uh, you can have some positive effects. Some study reports an improvement in outcomes, and others reported negative effect with an outcome worsens. One of uh, the main paper was a paper published uh, more than uh, 10 years ago by uh, Andres Esteban, uh, who reported that uh, using NIV in patients after extubation who developed acute respiratory failure, didn't, uh, we didn't observe any improvement in the intubation rate. However, and surprisingly, we observed an increase in mortality in the NIV group, mainly due to the delay of reintubation in this type of patient. That means that NIV could be not safe in some non-selected patients. In the post-operative area, we know that the development of acute respiratory failure after surgery was associated around 60% of mortality in comparison to patients who did not develop acute respiratory failure. That means that reintubated patient after surgery is really associated with a poor outcome. Then what uh, are the specificity of uh, surgery and uh, acute respiratory failure of surgery, these slides summarize the main modification due to surgery after uh, anesthesia and surgery in abdominal surgery. You have a uh, restrictive syndrome which is associated with a diaphragm dysfunction and also an atelectasis. This developed with a circular vicious which leads sometimes in uh, respiratory distress. And uh, as you can see on these slides, you have uh, the main mechanism, which is uh, the atelectasis in the dependent part of the lungs. This trial, published again in the Intensive Care Medicine Journal by uh, David Chumelo, shows in that you can use the, the NIV after surgery in the surgery which is near the diaphragm, cardiac surgery, abdominal surgery, thoracic surgery, and also in bariatric surgery in obese patients. In thoracic surgery, we know this uh, paper, which was published more than 15 years ago, was the first randomized control trial, 
which reported for the first time an improvement in uh, the outcome of patients who developed acute respiratory failure after thoracic surgery, and we observed a significant decrease from 15 to 28 percent of reintubation, and this was associated with an improvement of mortality in the NIV group. This uh, was reproduced in this observational study by the group of Antoine Rabat from Paris. However, in a study using NIV as prophylactic, the others reported a negative uh, study, but a tendency with in a decrease of acute respiratory failure in the early postoperative prophylactic NIV group. This is mean that probably if you want to use it, you should select it the more uh, specific patients. In abdominal surgery, one of the first paper, in fact, was in my point of view the paper published uh, um, 10 years ago, uh, 15 years ago by uh, Massimo Antonelli in patients who called uh, solid organ transplantation patients. And as you can see, you have here liver transplantation patient with renal uh, transplantation patient. And uh, for the first time, uh, Massimo reported a significant decrease of reintubation and complication and then a, a trend of decrease of mortality in this small sample size of patients who, who benefit from NIV after surgery. Another paper was uh, this paper by the group of Marco Ranieri and the squadron, which was uh, a prophylactic NIV using CPAP in hypoxemic patient without any signs of acute respiratory failure, just only hypoxemia, and the other reported a significant decrease from 10 to 1% of reintubation in this patient, which was associated with a significant decrease of lung infection and sepsis. As shown previously by Paolo, we performed a physiological study using the CT scan to show the effect of positive pressure ventilation uh, in patients who developed acute respiratory failure after abdominal surgery, and as you can see, as you can see, after 30 minutes of non-invasive positive pressure ventilation, we observed a significant decrease of atelectasis. We tried to evaluate this by a volumetric CT scan, and as you can see in this slides of color cuts, you see that you have an increase from uh, this part of this part by the green part which was the normally aerated uh, ventilator uh, lungs, and the significant decrease of the red part, which was uh, no aerated, which was then atelectasis. That means non-invasive positive pressure ventilation and use recruitment in this type of, in this type of patient. We also, sh we also showed that we can observe a significant decrease of the work of breathing, as you can see on this slide from the esophageal pressure, by using uh, non-invasive ventilation in this type of patient. We also observed an improvement of oxygenation. We reported first this uh, feasibility trial to show the safety of use NIV after abdominal surgery, and then we tried to perform the first randomized control trial in aim to evaluate the use of curative non-invasive ventilation on the outcome in patients who developed acute respiratory failure in postoperative period after abdominal surgery. The study called NIVAS for non-invasive ventilation for respiratory failure after abdominal surgery, and uh, the um, inclusion criteria was patients who developed acute respiratory failure occurring within the seven days of the surgical procedure as described in this uh, slide. That means acute respiratory failure with uh, tachypnea and signs of respiratory muscle fatigue associated to severe hypoxemia. This is the main results of the study, which was the reintubation rate within the seven day after inclusion of the study. And as you can see on this uh, Kaplan-Meier curve, we observed at the seven day a significant decrease from 46% to 33% with a significant P at 0.0.3. And then we observed a trend of 
a decrease of mortality at the 19 from 22% to 15%. We need just more three patients to change, but this is a life. And the, the study was not designed for a decrease of mortality. The se other secondary outcome shows a significant decrease of nosocomial infection and mainly the lung infection from 13 to 50 percent, which was also associated to a significant increase of invasive ventilation three days in the first month after surgery. The main message of uh, the study was that we can observe and obtain a reduction of reintubation associated with an improvement of the outcomes. In this study, we used uh, the following setting, just to summarize. I have, I think, uh, four minutes, yes. The, main, uh, the five main uh, ventilator setting was the inspiratory trigger. We also recommended to use between minus one to minus two, both, liter per minute or centimeter of water, depending of the type of inspiratory trigger, the slope from mild to maximal. The pressure could be and should be not more 15 centimeters, mainly between 5 to 10 centimeters. The expiratory trigger, if you have an dedicate, as um, uh, said by Paolo previously, try to have a cycling flow at 50% if you use the trigger flow, or an inspiratory maximal time at 1.2 seconds, or the better obviously is try to use a dedicated non-invasive ventilation uh, ventilation using an automatic auto track uh, expiratory trigger the p value should be used be, should be applied between 5 to 10 cm of water the duration of the trial uh, we recommend that if you use a curative strategy is uh, the more you can that mean 1 to 2 hours and uh, with two or three hours interval range. The objective, as in the NIVA study, is to try to have at least six hours a day of non-invasive ventilation. If you use prophylactic approach, try to use trial from 13 to 45 minutes, and um, uh, try also to avoid an IV application during the night and let the patient sleep. This is my previous last slide. Please, in case of NIV, if you did not observe a clinical and gas exchange improvement after one hour or two hours, as reported by different study, please stop NIV and intubate the patient. However, if you observed an improvement of the clinical condition and or gas exchange, you can uh, try to uh, sorry, I, uh, you, you understand me? <laughs> yes, sir. yes. Briefly, if you have an improvement, follow an IV. If you have not observed improvement, stop an IV. My conclusion, please. Uh, the method requires training and motivation of all the medical teams, especially the surgeon. You should absolutely speak always and change with your surgeon teams. This is very important, and the paramedical teams, nurse, respiratory therapist, and then try to use a ventilator which is more easy. And please, this is my main other message, you should always, when you have a post-acute respiratory failure, eliminate a surgical complication before use an IV. Never forget this, always an acute respiratory after surgery, you should try to eliminate this because this is a main problem. Never forget that NIV is only a symptomatic treatment, never an etiologic treatment. Then uh, try to avoid NIV if the, you decided to return the patient to operating room and please not delay the time of reintubation. Thank you very much for your attention.